Right, this job has just turned into an absolute nightmare. The reason being is because I've got everything running now and what I've found is that Welcome, thanks for tuning into this week's video. It is a cracker of a video. It's actually a job of two parts, but I've managed to get both parts of the video in one, which is why it's slightly longer than what I normally put up. It's about 25 minutes long, but trust me, you wanna see it to the very end because what I go through and what the outcome is, so let me know what you think of it. Also, you see me using some of the new Testo kit that was sent out. So I'm using the Testo voltage tester and the Testo temperature clamps and the Testo analyzer in there as well. Now with the analyzer, they've got a new Bluetooth module. So if you've got any of the temperature clamps or any of the other wireless accessories, it automatically syncs to the analyzer. So you can actually view everything on one screen with that Bluetooth module. If you don't have that, you can obviously use the Bluetooth on your phone and use the Testo Smart app and you can see all the readings on there. But this way, I don't have to then open up my phone or have my analyzer. I can literally have everything on my analyzer and show me everything that I need to do. Now, Testo, I currently got a fantastic autumn offer as well. So I'm gonna put a link in the description below. If you buy certain items in that promotion, you will get a free gift as well. Have a look at it. If anyone is in the market for a new analyzer or a new voltage tester, uh, thermal imaging camera, their kit is top notch. So check it out and if you're interested, go ahead and get one for yourself. But other than that, watch the rest of this video. You are gonna enjoy it, believe me. I enjoyed it by the end of it. Whilst I was doing it, I didn't. But by the end of it, I was like, right, I've sussed it. I know what it is. So I'll give you a little run through of what happened at the end of the video as well afterwards. So thanks for watching and please, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that like button. And I'll see you on the next one. Enjoy. All right, next job we've got here, a little bit out of my area, down in Catford, SE6. Report of no hot water, Zon valve. I know you guys aren't here, but take my word for it. I've got my hand on it and that's buzzing, but the spindle here is completely loose. Heating one is working fine. So we've got demand for hot water on at the moment, but it's not doing anything. So I'm gonna whip this off, have a look at the motor. If it is just a motor, we'll get that changed over. If we need to change the whole uh, head, we'll do that. I'll also have a look at the body as well to make sure that the spindle isn't jammed up. If that is, free that up as well so that doesn't have any more issues in this. So let's get this head off and have a look at it. Right, so I've got the head off. Now, that's actually jammed on there. So the fact that that's jammed on the micro switch and it's still not sending a demand, that's telling me that maybe the whole thing is actually gone and he's replacing that body. Yeah. That's probably because, yeah. That whole body's gonna need replacing by the looks of it. <clears throat> so it's not gonna be as straightforward as just changing that. I have to change the whole body. But again, don't know if I've got movement there or if I'll just have to change the guts. Let's have a look. Right, so I'm gonna change the whole valve over. I'm gonna drain it out from here, but typical that's leaking as well. So I'm gonna swap that isolation valve out, drain the system out from here, and then swap out the Zon valve as well. I've also noticed that this combination valve here has been dripping, there's a bit of a drip coming from there. So I'm gonna take details of the cylinder and I'm gonna come back and replace the combination valve, the PRV, TPRV, because you can see that's been going as well. And when I do that, I'll recharge the expansion bubble inside the cylinder as well. So try and give it an overall service as well 
in that respect. But first things first, let's just get this done today. So I'm going to be using the Nipex Ergo Strip to sort these wires out because the wiring center is a bit of a mess. So I'm just going to put a five way on it. This is the right handed one. So this is code is 169501. They also do a left handed version as well, but it just makes stripping cables so much more easier. A couple of turns, pulls off. And then even on the side here, it's got the different cable sizes as well. So you can put your wire into the right size and just strip the ends off so pop it into there see easy as that no more worrying about accidentally chopping the end of the cable off with a pair of snips easy as that so now I'm just gonna pop into one of these and we're done right the zone valve has been changed over it's wired up Power's back on, and we've got heat flowing into the cylinder, and no more banging noise coming from there. Change the AAV over as well because the old one, Sod's Law, when I filled it up and I tried to vent it, started leaking. But luckily, there's an isolation valve on there. Turned it off, quickly changed it over, so that's that done. Now I'm just going to take the details of this, and I'll come back another day to sort all this out and basically give the cylinder a proper service as well but that's all up and running now so job done right back at this catford job so first thing I'm, I'm going to be doing i've got a few bits to do here obviously i changed that last time they're now saying they've got a problem with the central heating it's not coming on so i'm going to check the central heating zone valve as well to see what's going on with that but the main thing i'm going to be doing firstly is sorting all this out so i'm going to be replacing the combination valve, the PRV, the TPRV. There's also that tundish is looking a bit crusty, a bit worse for wear. So I've ordered all new bits here. So now the new combination valve and PRV, it all comes separate. Whereas on there, it's like that, the new ones. So you've got your combination valve, which is separate. Isolation valve will go in that way, the direction of the flow. And then I've got to get the PRV in that way as well. And then the TPRV. No, I'm just going to there. So first things first, uh, we want, because we're going to be changing all of this, this on that shark bite fittings as well. So I'll probably have to cut some pipe, rejig a bit of the pipe. Let's turn the water off first. So that's off. So now I'm going to put a, where's that going? That's going round there. So I'm going to put holes on there get the drain off going open that up so at least it will recharge the air bubble in here at the same time once it stopped dripping whip that out pop the new tprv in and then sort out what i can do here typical washer is stuck in there so got myself a new washer but what i might try and do is literally get that out jump this in so at least i can get it draining because it's going to take ages if i just try and open up a tap and do that way that's just glugging so we're going to try and do that first, then trying to work out how to do this. I think I'm going to take off this non-return valve here because that's not needed because there's already one in here that works as a check valve as well. Bring that up, pop that there, put a street elbow coming out there, which will then come round and then get rid of this and basically pop that into that section. So the PRV will still line up with the existing pipe. So that should save me a little bit of hassle. So I should only have to do a little bit of pipe work there. Now, 
Let me see. I've got water coming out the hose. Yeah, got more coming out there. Perfect. So now I can set my grips back up on the TPRV, get that draining. There we go. So I'll just basically get my set of grips on there and the weight of it just holds the TPRV open. We should be getting... Yeah, that's better. Still not great, but it's better than where it was. So at least now, whilst that's doing its thing, I can start working on this, I reckon. Right, that's all done. Press that in, press that in. New PRV, new combination valve, well, new pressure reducing valve, new isolation valve. I have left that in because I guess you can't have too many non-return valves, especially when holds some water. Let's just check this. All right, that stopped dripping now as well. So now whip this out and get that swapped over as well. This one, I probably won't be able to film just because of the angle, but it's literally a case of turning it out from there and winding a new one in. All right, that's the new TPRV. That's all been changed. So everything's good now. I should now be able to turn everything back on. So let's do it bit by bit. Leave my valves on. Now let's turn that on okay that's sounding good so far i'm going to leave my hose on there just in case because i don't want to jinx it in case something happens i've got to drain down quickly again so let that fill up i'll open up a hot tap let it get rid of any air in there and let it fill up and then I've got to see what's going on with the heating here all right now let's see what's going on with the central heating so Central heating is off at the moment. That's the heating zone valve I've taken off the body for the time being. So let's just put central heating on. What was that noise? Did the boiler try to fire up or something? It might have done a bit of pumper. I think that's why it needs a bypass because it's making that banging noise. All right, so let's put heating on. And now let's go and put the thermostat up. Okay, thermostat's up. Now, is this moving? No. That's not doing anything. So there's two ways we can check this now. I can either open up the wiring center and see if I've got power coming from the room stat, or I can start at the room stat check if I've got power going to the room stat because I don't know about you but the light the backlight on that programmer looks a bit dim so I'm assuming this could have become faulty and not the zone valve so I think let's go and check on the room stat have we got power on the common and if we do and we've got power on the switch if we do then we'll come to the wiring center, step by step. Okay, so got the room stack cover off. Now let's have a look. So we've got heating demand on from the programmer. Let's put one probe on the earth. One on the common. Right, got nothing there. Let's check between neutral. 
yeah, nothing on there. Let me just get that back on the neutral. Cool. So that's telling me we haven't got power going to the room's thermostat, which means my suspicions were correct. I've got a faulty programmer. Okay, new programmer's on. That was a nice easy swap, literally same back plate, whip the old one off, pop the new one on. Let's put some power in there. Heat inside. Oh. Right, heating's on constant. Let's go and check our room stat now. So now I should be getting, so I've turned the room stat dial down. One probe on the earth. Now, there we go. 230 on there. Obviously nothing on there at the moment, but as soon as I turn that up, I've now got 230 on there. And as I go over here, that heating zone valve should have melted over, which it has. And I've heard the click. So now we should be getting demand on the boiler here, which you do. Happy days. I thought it was a zone valve because obviously I changed the other one last time. So I brought zone valves with me, I bought synchro motors with me just in case. But one look at that programmer, the display had me thinking it's probably going to be that programmer. And that's why you always, whenever you're doing fault finding on anything, but especially on wiring, start at the source. Don't assume that it's going to be a zone valve or this, that, the other. Start at the source. The source is going to be your programmer. That's where all the signals go out from for your heating or hot water, whether it's S plan, Y plan, W plan, whatever. Start from your programmer. Work your way step by step by step. Otherwise, I could have easily just started messing around with the wiring center there, doing all this, that, the other. Still no progress. Ended up checking that first. Found out that was the fault. Job done. Hope you found that helpful. So I've also got to fit a bypass in just under there because there's no bypass. It's on an S plan. There's no bypass put in and it's all spaghetti junction. I've got nowhere to fit the bypass there. So the only place I can fit it is under the boiler. And the reason I've got to fit one, you know, it's a spam call. Every time the demand finishes, they're getting a knocking sound because obviously zone valve shut, pump's got nowhere to dissipate the heat. So it's just going bang every time it shuts. So hopefully, fit a bypass underneath there, and that should sort the banging noise out as well. Okay, slight change of plan here. I decided to find a space to put in the airing cupboard because under the boiler, just as I was about to start, I realized I'm not gonna have enough play to move the pipe up and down to get those T's in. So I have managed to find space in the airing cupboard to get the bypass in. So we've got a primary flow coming up here. Managed to get enough space on here to cut a T into there, bring that round. Now this gate valve was originally where this T is. So I managed to cut that back a bit, move the gate valve towards the back, and then I've got the bypass going in straight there. And that's got enough space there if I ever need to work on the two port, got enough space if I need to work on that two port. So I've done it in a way that if there's any other work that needs to be done, still try and keep it as accessible as possible. So the compression's all done up. I've just got to press all these press fittings in and then we can fill up the system again. Right, this job has just turned into an absolute nightmare. The reason being is because I've got everything running now and what I've found is that wh whoever's done the pipe work, they've got the flow and the returns the wrong way round. Because I fired up the hot water and the heating, obviously hot water circuit is just getting warm there. And naturally you look at it, you've got your primary flow coming up there, coming round there, going through each zone valve, yeah, no problem. Fired up the heating, I'm not getting anything going through this zone valve. I am getting now, but that's on the return. So the re what I thought was a return, that's roasting hot. That's the flow. So whoever's done the pipe work here, they've messed it up and got the flow and returns the wrong way around. So everything is reverse circulating which is an absolute nightmare. So I've got two options here. 
either I flipped, I just flipped that bypass round, or I then have to do some jiggery pokery here. And that explains why they've been getting some random radiators coming on when they don't want them to come on. Because whoever's moved, fit this boiler, they've got the flow and returns the wrong way around. And all that work that I've done has just been in absolute vain. So, the easiest thing to do is number two, turn this bypass round. What a nightmare. Right. So let's get on with it. 100% flow and returns are crossed. I've just proved it, got my temperature clamps on what I thought was meant to be the return. And this one is on what I thought was meant to be the flow. So that's number 894 and that's number 064. Boiler's running. Now, hopefully this will focus, but you can see on here that 064 is 59.2 degrees and climbing. 894 is 35.8 degrees and climbing slowly so the flow returns 100% cross so all I've had all I've been able to do today is turn this bypass around so that at least when the demand shuts it will then go in the wrong in the right way god oh, been here for five hours done all this work oh man and the problem is an installation error by I can't even say oh I'm so annoyed so frustrated. I should have been out of here a good couple of hours ago. <clears throat> right. At least I managed to get a work around it. And I've got the proof here. So no one can deny that I'm making it up because the proof is in the readings. Temperature clamps say all oh, man made errors. People, I don't understand how people fitting out there, fitting boilers, fitting systems, not even understanding how they work and how they're meant to be piped up. And then I get called in and I have to fix someone else's mess, not knowing that they've messed it up. Right. It's a workaround. I've turned the bypass the other way around. You can have it with the zone valves on the return. It's not a problem. But I don't know what else. Look, there's a, all that mishmash there. I don't know how the guy's configured it, whatever he's done under there or whatnot. But yeah, it is what it is. Apologies for the lack of lighting. I am spent, totally spent on this job. I clocked at the end and I realized that it was piped up the wrong way around. The reason why getting a banging noise every time the zone valve shuts because the zone valves are piped up the wrong way around. Well, they're piped up the right way around, but because the flow and returns have been crossed, the little ball inside, when it's shutting, the force of the pump is bang, shutting it. Whereas if it's the opposite way, in the natural direction of the flow, once it de-energizes, it's going to spring back, but you've still got a bit of the force of the pump pushing against the ball, so it closes slightly slower. So, yeah. Luckily, a customer came home just as I was basically about to lose my rag. And I explained to him, I got my temperature clamps out again, I showed him, exactly what the problem was. We got on the phone to the original installer, explained it to him, and obviously he's completely denying it. No, 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 you know, I was like, mate, I've done a video of this. I can send it to you to show you. I've just shown the customer as well. So it's up to you. Either you come back and rectify it, or I do it and I build a customer and then he's gonna bill you. What do you wanna do? So he's now apparently coming back this weekend to sort it out for the customer. But the customer doesn't hold much hope for him. And he said, if, it, if you can't do it, then yeah, I'll have to come and sort it out. The problem is, the reason why I'm a little bit reluctant to get too involved is because I could switch the flow and returns right under the boiler, but I don't know what's going on with the pipe work in the airing cupboard under the floor. So that could all be well and good, I could do that. But then what if there's something else that's wrong? I could just be opening up a can of worms. So hopefully that guy comes and sorts it. Oh, the other thing was where the programmer was faulty, the guy, the customer originally called the guy to come and sort, have a look at the heating as well. 
And the reason why he called me is because he couldn't work it out. He was saying, oh, it's a problem with the boiler. He's got called Valent to get a cold, to reset the boiler, or this, that, the other. Apparently, he's an electrician as well. Clearly, he doesn't know how to test basic electrics because all I did was I just checked the power at the thermostat to see if the program was sending power there, which it wasn't. So that was the conclusion that the program was faulty. So I swapped the programmer out and it's all working fine. It's just, I don't, look, I'm not 100%, yeah? No, I'm far from 100%. But I strongly believe that I've got a very good understanding of how heating systems work and how to fix issues on, on, on systems, boilers, controls, things like that. I've still got a lot to learn. There's loads out there which I don't know, but I feel I've got a good grasp of the basic stuff, which people out there just lashing in stuff without a clue and then causing problems for customers like this and then it comes down to someone else to try and rectify it and then when you try and tell them that you've done something wrong they just like get the backup no 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 i'm like no the proof is in the pudding like i've proved it that it's wrong so how can you deny it sorry i'm rambling on a bit it's just i've i've been here for five hours okay i'm really frustrated I've now got, let me see how long my journey home is even. It's going to be, it's quarter past six and I've got to get to, let's have a look, directions. Uh, let's see, home. Home. Right. One hour, 18 minutes to get home at this time. So you can understand why I'm a little bit peeved off and a little bit frustrated that I've spent all this time on this job. <sighs> I got paid, silver lining, good night. Now just to follow up from the rant that I did just previously, I did speak to the customer uh, the other day and the original installer has been around. He has swapped the flan return pipes around and I've been told that everything is working absolutely perfectly now. It's a little bit reassuring to know that my diagnosis was correct. Obviously, you know, I was had there was a lot going on on that job and I had to make sure that what I was diagnosing was correct. And with the use of the correct equipment, the test of temperature clamps, they really helped me identify that I was correct in diagnosing that the flan returns had been crossed. And by using the temperature clamps, I was able to show the customer as well, showing the proof that I'm not just making it up. I was able to identify which pipe was supposedly meant to be the flow, which was supposedly meant to be the return. And I showed him how the temperature differences were, weren't what they were supposed to be, where the return was getting hotter first and then the flow. So he could see that gave him confidence in me that I was confident in my diagnosis. And then you got the original stall around. He's done his bit, it's all working. So overall, positive result, everything's working. Happy days. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.